Nice out. All right. So, Dale, tell us about this crazy and uh, innovative model of flipping things. You bet. When I started doing podcasts, I use it for things that are skills. So I teach chemistry, and one of the skills is naming. And so how do you learn a skill? You have to understand how to do it, and then you need to practice it. And you need to know whether or not you're doing it correctly or not. In the old method, when it was just me and a board, I would explain it. I'd do a few examples on the boards. Kids would go home and they'd practice it. They found out the next day whether or not they had done it correctly. That's kind of like giving a kid, okay, watch me shoot a basket, and now I want you to go home and shoot baskets, and I'll tell you tomorrow if you did a decent job. Instead, what I can do is I still give a traditional lecture, but I go through maybe just one example. A lot of kids will come to that, but not all. And then I'll do podcasts for skills where they can watch me do examples and explain it, and they can watch that as many times as they want, and they can stop it, they can replay it. Some kids learn just from that. Other kids use that in addition to the lecture. And then in that process, um, that's a portion of my class. Then the rest of the class, I'm going around and I'm tutoring kids. I've got a question, how did they do this? And I provide them through the computers, I provide them the answers right away. I tell them, don't do the whole sheet and then find out you did it wrong. Do three or four, check your answers. Three or four, check your answers. And what I used to do outside of class, come in early, come in before school or after school so that I can help you more. I'm doing that in class now. The lecture part of it, the examples, can happen outside of class, and especially if you are sick, you can still get that information. And so what used to happen in class is now located in a computer. What I used to do outside of class, the tutoring, the thing they really need me for, one-on-one, -on -one, that's happening inside my class. And that's really exciting. And, um, you know, it's really changed just the way things happen in my classroom, and I've really appreciated that. And it allows kids to do what they need to. Um, I had one student who told me, I like to watch the podcast before you do the lecture, and if I understand it, then I don't come to you, I don't move my desk, my chair up to the front to listen to the lecture. Instead, I can start on the worksheet right away, and I end up with no homework, and they like that. But if I don't understand it, I know the next day you're going to give a lecture, and I can ask questions, and I can get the help there. So that student is now owning their own learning and thinking about how they learn and what they need in a way that I couldn't do when everybody had to get the same thing. Is this difficult for kids to make the shift? Obviously, as an instructor, it changes your prep and your whole your, your model, but how about the student side? Sure. Are some um, kids having a lot of difficulty with it um, or, or not as much? It, it is a shift because they need to own it. And, and there are some students who are ready for that, and I love to watch them fly. And that's, it's more of a college model. Come to class if you want. Don't come to class, but it's your job to learn it. I do have some students who they say, well, I'm, you know, teacher didn't assign it, so, and I have all the answers. I'll just copy things down. And they very quickly learn that doesn't teach you anything. And so those are kids I watch for. And then I can go to them individually during some of that time and say, hey, how's this going? You don't have much done. It doesn't seem like this is working. What do you think you could do different? Did you watch the podcast? Have you checked the answers? I start to ask questions that, frankly, I know the answers to. No, they haven't. That's why they're doing poorly. But they start to see that, and they start to realize that it's not teacher's job to learn. It's their job to learn. My job is to surround them with resources. And through the technology, I can do that at home and at school and, you know, so that's sort of my image. Student surrounded by resources, and my job is to help them then learn as they access those resources. One more technical question. Sure. Podcast producer, how, what, talk about your workflow and, and what your experience has been. All right. With so that. I have used, um, as far as the program, I've used a program called Skitch and uh, a program and a website called Screencast-O-Matic. That's what most of my stuff was oh, made. So Screencast-O-Matic's okay. free. I've heard lots about Camtasia, and we now have it. We didn't at, at the time when I started doing this, so I'm more familiar with Screencast-O-Matic free um, and Skitch free. Um, so that's how I made my podcast. As far as getting them to students with podcast producer and stuff, that is um, our, our uh, system tech person who walked through that. So are as you, a teacher, I don't know that side of it. Are you putting stuff into Moodle then when you're creating it, or you're able to turn it over to your tech team that then puts That's, it into the podcast yeah. process? How I started was I would put it onto Moodle, but that meant it had to be small enough to fit on Moodle. Less and than so 30 megs were, or whatever you know, the exactly. restrictions. And so that, that became, you know, you had ionic naming parts 1 through 10. <laughs> yeah. um, now I'm able to use iMovie and, and get things together. And I also, you know, I, I've 
ask kids what do they like, what don't they like, and one of the things they like is like titles put in it so that they can easy, when they're scrolling around, they can find, you know, oh, here's the part where he talks about this. So I, um, I've used um, iMovie to do that. Then with that, then I end up um, using Podcast Producer. A workflow was already set for me so that we have a Chem 1 podcast, and in the beginning of the class we get that all set. So now all those podcasts are located on the iTunes where the kids can see them. Um, again, previous to this, it was break it all up on Moodle, and then who knows where the kids saved it. Um, and so the podcast producer putting it into a podcast with iTunes, that has really made things go a lot smoother for kids because I know right where it is too, so I can point it out to them if they, I don't know where the podcast is. Well, let's go find it. Yep. So Awesome. That's great. Thanks.